Welcome back. You're watching Global Today. And of course, I'm still lacking on uh, and hovering on this particular story uh, of where I find uh, very interesting uh, that the High Court in Mombasa is sentencing a Catholic priest on a rare three-year mission educate congregants about the Sexual Offences Act after it found him guilty of an offence under the law. Dominic, Father Dominic Mullins-Yoka, he says, will spread this gospel at least once a month on a Sunday. This task will be closely monitored by the parish head and probation officer who are then required to compile a report for the court, it says here. Justice Anne Oginjo sent the clergyman on the mission after confirming the guilty verdicts handed to handed down to down handed to down by or handed down it should read by a lower court for the offense of committing an indecent act with a 16 year old girl who was a member of the group youth group at his church principal magistrate Nelly Karaoke of Sanju that is Sanju sexual and gender based violence court had sentenced him to seven years in prison for the crime against the minor on June 22nd last year. However, on appeal, Justice Oginjo decided to modify the sentence despite acknowledging that the magistrate court had correctly found him guilty of offense he committed on September 28, 2020 in Mutopanga, Kisaoni sub-county. And this is what we are questioning. First of all, should uh, the priest not be defrocked? Why should he be still holding uh, that particular office and continuing to spread this gospel? And secondly, uh, what is the archbishop of that particular diocese thinks about this particular offense? Mm. And is it indeed, again, I raise it, an indictment and disrespectful to the mother and the daughter who will be sitting in the same congregation or wherever he will be preaching this particular gospel hearing it tripping off his tongue and this is not the first time he's been caught i mean this has been ongoing so if this is your practice that uh, this is your nature this is your pet sin why should you be holding this particular services uh, for the lady and the question again should be this is, raises a big question about doctrinal matters as well and the issue of celibacy and when especially in the catholic church because this is not a one, we have so many cases, uh, not just with pedophiles, but also uh, infidelity that is arising. Uh, I think this is a, is a time that we should broach this subject and just discuss it openly at the end of the day. I think we can the, finalize. There are two challenges here. One, challenge to the court. The judge who made that decision must be has a case to answer. <laughs> in the court of public opinion. <laughs> the judiciary should do its job, whatever it is. But in the court of public opinion, he has a case to answer. Second, Archbishop Kevuva, the Archbishop of Mombasa, Catholic Diocese, Archdiocese, has a job to do. He has to explain what's going on. Is this the first time that this priest has done that? Or is it that it has just become public now? And the since he's in charge of the diocese, the diocese, attention should be to him. What are you going to do about this kind of thing? Is that priest supposed to be preaching? Is that kind of thing? So it's up to the archbishop, Kevuva, to call his council or whatever the the people he makes decisions with. Maybe consult with other archbishops, there are about four of them in the country, on what should be the doctrine on this kind of matter. It is true that it is not um, the first time that um, uh, priests have been um, caught doing peculiar things. And uh, it's been handled in different ways. But this particular one <laughs> catches attention because it, not, it not only involves the priest, now we have a judge who is now the subject of the discussion that how can you do that? 
in good conscience. It's an insult to the church. It's an insult to the mother, to the child, to everyone. So the, the, maybe the judge has a good reason for what. <laughs> but we, wa we want to know what's that good reason. Maybe the judge also fellowships in that particular church. So he has a soft spot for, <laughs> no, I, 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 for I the father. I don't think uh, Imbari should go that uh, uh, direction, in, in, in my view. And, and I sit here this morning thinking, uh, you know, in my local church here in Nairobi, uh, I'm in charge of uh, 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 the youth between the ages of 16, where this girl is, uh, and 21. My wife and I, we, we, we are the leaders to mentor these young children. And um, uh, from that perspective, I think uh, Father Dominic Mullinzioka uh, has very serious questions to answer in, in, in my view. As somebody the parents entrusted uh, or entrusts the, their children to, uh, basically a shepherd. Uh, we're supposed to take care of these children and guide them, is now the one uh, uh, abusing them. We, we are not against uh, the doctrinal principle that um, uh, Father Dominic should confess his sins and uh, uh, he will be forgiven. But that does not really uh, mean that uh, he should not be separated from uh, the congregation and the society generally uh, until probably such a time uh, uh, the, 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 the people and the church generally is sure that he has changed his, his, his ways. Separation is, is, is the key word. Uh, and um, uh, probably uh, what uh, Professor Macharia is talking about, the, the bishop in church <laughs> of, 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 of this diocese, uh, you know, owes the country an explanation. And, and what the church is going to do, uh, uh, really, to make sure that uh, this that doesn't happen again. Uh, and also that, uh, uh, you know, Father Dominic is helped, uh, you, you know, not to get back to this kind of, 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 of habit. Uh, again, um, uh, you know, uh, we call out the judiciary, uh, Justice uh, Oginjo, uh, he also has to explain to the country on what basis he did that. Uh, because, uh, is that she? Yeah, uh, you, you, you know, on, on what basis? Because he was there as a custodian of, of law, uh, not as a member of a church, in my view. If uh, uh, what professor is hinting at, that he, be, he belonged to the congregation, is anything to go by. So she owes the country an, an explanation. So, so I think um, uh, l l let's not beat around the bush about this. Uh, things are very clear. Uh, the guy needs to be separated from society and the children because he has, the, he has demonstrated that he has the potential uh, to, 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 to behave badly uh, with the children entrusted uh, uh, into his care. Fantastic. I think uh, you've given it, uh, unless Farah, you wanted to say something. No, no, I think you've a, given it a good rap. Uh, you, you, and know, we hope, yes. you know, it, uh, it, it says the irony of this thing is that the judge agrees with the magistrate, trial magistrate. That he, he was found guilty. He was found guilty. But we soft, soft pedal on it, soften, just yeah, give him yeah, a minute yeah. one. And then just go back and treat the whole thing like a, a small social altercation somewhere. So what do you tell other pedophiles who are locked up? No, there? what do you tell the judiciary? This judiciary, years, uh, this yeah. judiciary, no, 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 this judiciary, this judiciary needs to be reformed. Let's get another ringera and throw out all these people who do this kind of thing. This is, this is all, all, all corruption. I mean, what else would you explain? And, 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 the, and the Catholic, what do you call uh, uh, bishop who is in charge of all of them? The diocese, call him, uh, uh, the diocese yes. Okay. And, and others, ordinarily, in other parts of the world, they would take, uh, they would take um, a social responsibility for that thing, a religious responsibility for it, and step down. Move out of that place, or at least go to another diocese. You, you know what I mean? Because then you, these things have happened under your watch. And, and um, if, what about is this going to be an exodus out of the, out of the church? 
You know what I mean? People just decide, no, no, no. And beyond borders, we've seen also how the church has been handling this particular matters. We find if you found capable in this particular parish, that uh, you embroiled in such... Oh, uh, you, they yeah. come hard on you, you. you. Not even hard on you. Actually, you are transferred to other to another parish. Yes. So, yes. We, which really beats the purpose... Even under of, that yeah, other because, parish, yeah, under supervision that's, again. That's, that's what I'm saying. For ha not having uh, picked out those things. Not having picked out. Not because you committed to yourself. But because you are in charge of the parish and somebody within the parish, one of the, one of the, one of the, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call the, the bishop who committed the problem? The father. Yeah, the father. Yes. yes. A father and a, a father under the uh, diocese has done this. You take responsibility for it. And and, and uh, you know, let me let me tell you, let me tell you. I, I'm glad. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, with. Uh, and this is a faith, so you have to be very careful when you're talking about another faith. Because I'm not a Christian myself, I'm a Muslim. But in my own social setting, I mean, somebody does that to your, your daughter or he does that to your sister. <laughs> if we have the honor, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm a brother or a father. Or they protect your honor. They'll kill you. Mm. They get rid of you. They blow your brains off. A small minor like that, uh, given an opportunity, they will deal with you. It's, it's not as bad as it used to be before, yeah. but it was very, very bad. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, we, but, you know, everything goes now, you know, everything goes now. This is, society has become global, and uh, these kind of things happen right under our, and it, instead of seeing outrage, you see people, you know, mamas, small mamas, there has to be an outrage. Serious outrage and say no, unacceptable. And, and by the way, I'll be surprised if the DPP does not appeal against this and, and goes to the next, uh, the next court. You know, court of appeal here uh, against the sentence, against this sentence, and say no, that sentence yeah. was, 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 was there on us. Yeah. And, uh, let me deeper. Uh, I've seen people texting here. Um, uh, let, let me just make it uh, quite clear that um, uh, we, we are not pontificating here. Uh, that we are holier than uh, Father uh, Dominic Nzioka or, or any other person. Um, we, we are just human. Uh, we, we are saying probably as parents uh, and also as people who have been entrusted with some level of responsibility, uh, both in public and um, uh, religious or informal institutions, uh, we have to exercise that responsibility uh, in, in ways that are in tandem with the uh, certain moral standards that have been put in place. That, that is uh, what, what you are saying. Uh, but um, we, we appreciate the, the fact that uh, as human beings, we are all sinners and we are fallen short of the glory of, of, of God. That is what my Bible says. <laughs> and um, we are not saying that we are better than everybody else. I, I think I need to make that uh, uh, very, uh, very clear from the outset. But the thing is, somebody somewhere should be answerable for the injustice uh, and the unfairness uh, and the, the, the immoral uh, acts that have been committed against an innocent 16-year-old. Uh, that, 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 that's all uh, we are saying this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just uh, we'll wait and see what really happens to this particular case. And I think even as a, a panel, as a show, as a journalist myself, I think my duty is to try and put this to the public so that they be aware of uh, what is really happening, what is tucked away in the dailies that you might miss. And uh, you be cognizant of the fact that, you know, sometimes some people that you trust around you, uh, they're the same people who are going to, you know, uh, grievously hurt you uh, in in every which way, in this manner of now when you dedicate your, 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 your time, uh, your, your commitment you know, to a church, and you have your children going there, especially this uh, holiday season when people are wondering, and you can see how then do we uh, deal with the, with the children? Do they go to vocational Bible study? Uh, do they go to, of course, get occupied in the church's activities? And these things are happening in church. At the, at the end of the day, you need to be wary of that as well. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, they say, as you say, that uh, we, are, we have a fallen nature. But that should not be a stock excuse to perpetrate this evil. And this is happening, especially if it's happening within the church. And uh, 
the, the apex leadership of a church is the father, so to speak. So what really happens with other jurisdictions within the church, the youth ministry, uh, the Sunday school? Uh, and this is not just a principle of the church as well. And we can talk about even for the mosques as well. And uh, we need to be cognizant of, our, of, of that particular fact. So we need just to keep our eyes peeled all the time to make sure that this doesn't just slide and people don't talk about it. We need to raise these issues that is happening in the church and it needs to be addressed. And there are many young people who have been affected by the authorities in the church who overwhelm them. So you can imagine a 16-year-old who's going on a confession box, right, to confess of her sins. And it is the same father who's committing the sin with her. I mean, that is just despicable. We should not even talk about it. Let's head over now to Senegal, that, where... That, that's also not just in, 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 in Christianity or Catholicism. Yes. It's everywhere. Even in Muslims, there, there, are, there are people who abuse children that are put under their custody. <laughs> and, and they're very few and very far apart, but, but it's not to say that it doesn't happen. But if that happens, I personally would, would call for the, the ultimate <laughs> judgment for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, mean I, I watched a, a father whose daughter was uh, raped by somebody in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, in the US. And then when the guy was passing nearby, he just pulled, pulled out a gun and shot him in the brains. And he lay dead there. And there are many people, many cases, a mother also the same thing. Many cases like that happen. So, so you, like you said, you allow people to take the law into their own hands. The government does not act on some of these things, despicable things. It's not just one faith. It, it, it could happen anywhere, but we just have to be out there and protect our children to the, to the, to the, to the hilt. And, and uh, a society, the, 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 the future of a society is, 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 is nothing other than its own children. You bring up good children, good values, very well protected from all these you know, things that happen, and, and, and with a caring uh, adult population in here, and leadership and everybody, they will also in turn become the same when they grow progressively. But you bring up uh, children who have been abused, as adults, they will also continue abusing the others. Mm -hmm. As adults, they will continue abusing the others. Right. So, so we, 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 we just have to protect our society. You know, I remember... Uh, uh, whether it's Hindus or yes, Catholics or exactly. Muslims or, uh, you know, or Protestants or anybody. Let's, let's protect our children every way we can. I mean, this is a society that has to take care of its own vulnerables. The vulnerables are the children, the elderly people, the elderly people. In, in my faith, you, uh, one of the companions of the prophet, uh, peace and blessings of God be upon him, and who was also his own cousin, uh, Ali, one of the caliphs, was running to the mosque. But in front of him was an old Jewish guy who could not walk very well. Not a Muslim. Not a Muslim. But he felt he could not just pass him and run to the mosque. He says he kept on walking behind that old man. And he got late for the prayers. And when the Prophet asked him, uh, peace be upon him, why? And he mentioned it. You know, everybody was happy. That's what the faith is about. You're supposed to protect the elderly. Going into a bus, going into a queue, going wherever it is. You see them in the streets. Just don't pass them with a lot of force uh, next to them because then you have the, you have the strength. You're young, you're youthful. And... No, no, no. Take care of them. The parents are the same also. There are many people who are very well educated in this country with very good jobs, and the parents who brought them up barefoot, going to the farm, selling the little vegetables they have out there, are out there in the rural areas suffering. Many, many, many. I don't want to mention names, but I remember a very senior person, and, and, and the father was killed by thugs because he, he was not given proper, proper protection. So there are many, many parents right now in the country, vulnerables, who educated their children, and those children are here basically high-flying, do not want to be associated with that rural, very poor old lady or old man. And they're there, retired civil servants, suffering in their own homes on a very meager, what do you call, a, 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 a very, very small pension. And the children who or she brought up and educated them very well are here. 
high flying, earning hundreds of thousands, if not millions, and not being taken, not taking care of their own, their parents back at home. Uh, well, there has to be certain kind of a responsibility in the society. The responsibility we must legislate the responsibility to parents in this, all vulnerable and the rest. We, in my faith, your father can just wait until you have made enough, even if it's billions, and take it all. Take it all. Invoke that as a father, I have taken all his wealth. And wait again until you have made many, much more than that and take it all again. Like, like that. And then wait again a third time, so three times your father can take all your, 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 whatever you own. And the prophet was asking, what about your mother? He said, there's no limit to the mother. The mother can take it away as often as she wants. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we say the blessings and, 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 and heaven for you heaven for the person is under the feet of the mother. Al-Jannah to tahta aqdami wa mahatikum is the prophet saying. But, but then we, we need to really have a, a, a system that makes sure that our parents who are back at home, wherever they are, are taken good care of. You, you, don't, you don't allow um, you know, a young man to do so good and then the wife that he met in, 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 in good times yeah. says, ah, take this mother to Shago. You know what I mean? And then she, she's forgotten there. I think that a lot of that is happening in the country, Professor. No, no it's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. Which is a very unfortunate thing. It's an unfortunate <laughs> thing. So we must have a certain law that is going to be to make sure that these kind of things do not happen. Yeah. Do we protect yeah. our elderly. Because they invested everything. They put all the money into their children. Indeed. And Indeed. they borrowed money. They, 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 they mortgaged their own what you call small tracts of land. Eh? And everything else. And now he's a retired civil servant. He doesn't have anything. He lives in a very poor, you know, or whatever he is, or he worked all his life as a laborer in a farm, but, but educated his children very well. And those children are not taking care of him now. Oh, ha. Indeed. It reminds mm. me, uh, mm -hmm. Professor, mm. where I think last year we had a very also heart-wrenching story of uh, one Lea Njiri Giduka. She was an 82-year-old granny and uh, was, disco was discovered approx approximately nine months. Mm. After she died? Mm. After her death. Yes, yeah. in her house. Yeah. The carcass also of her dog was also found in the homestead, which had been neglected for some time. The deceased had been living alone, and her son, who works in the aviation industry as a pilot, had been sending her monthly upkeep. And Jerry was a retired teacher, and he said to have been a loner who rarely interacted with her neighbors. So in June, police officers had been informed by her granddaughter that Jerry was not home. So the granddaughter, who lives in South Africa, had traveled home to visit her grandmother. But no one opened the gate. So when she knocked on the gate, she reported the incident, uh, prompting... Uh, police to come when, in. Yeah, when she knocked, no one opened the, the gate. So she reported the incident, prompting the DCI to unravel the mystery. And uh, uh, we, we, that's when now that it was discovered that, uh, yes, She'd been dead she for has nine been died for nine months. The son has been sending monthly stipends. But he wasn't talking every, to his every, mother. Every, he was not really talking to his mother. He has to talk to his mother. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't stay for two days without talking to my mother. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Yes, You're yes, not allowed to stay yes, for two right. days. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that is when she has other of your, 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 your brothers and sisters around her. I mean, I have my brothers and sisters around my mother. But still, if I take two days without talking to her, you can't imagine the amount of trashing I will get on the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you know what I mean? It, it, it just should not be that way, uh, Dibal. And look at this guy now. He's doing very well in the aviation industry, uh, but he doesn't talk to his mother. Why should his mother stay alone when he's got such a good job himself? Why not bring the mother and put up a guest house for her, wherever you are, and put her in the, in the best, what you call, uh, bedroom in your own uh, flat or apartment or whatever it is, and take care of her until, until such time that, you know, either God takes her away or you go yourself. Uh, you, you know what I mean? All right, I think that those will be dynamics of... Uh, of I think <laughs> I, I think understand the where Ms. Miro Mahariam is coming from and Professor. I, I have no problems. I, I stay with my mother, so it's no question about uh, the rest of the things, because it's my obligation. But then uh, we have a generation uh, much younger than us that doesn't look at things in a much more cultural and traditional way we are looking at it. So what we really need, and, and I'm glad uh, 
Ms. Miwa, you are a member of parliament, uh, are official structures uh, that uh, will uh, ensure that uh, those whose children uh, are not taken care of them, uh, they need to be taken care of by the state. We, we see what happens elsewhere. If the children uh, can afford, I, mean, I, I, I the have, law has to be there to make sure to compel them. Uh, exactly. To that, that's if the children what, cannot afford, then that, of course, That's what I'm mistake. looking at, yes, that yes. There, there are those who could not have children who are able to take care of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the state needs to come in. Uh, I've lived elsewhere. I lived in the UK for, for a while. And uh, they are proficient for uh, the old, old people's homes. Uh, which are very well kept and uh, they're, they're very well maintained and uh, they, they house uh, whole people. Uh, probably that's a direction, which we were uh, in, 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 in your role as a leader in the National Assembly, maybe you need to begin thinking about that and legislate how the state is going to support our old people. I'm glad that now we are giving them some allowance. Uh, I wish it would be more. Uh, especially those who are in the countryside. Uh, but then we need to think seriously on how to take care of our old people. A very important, very critical uh, responsibility that uh, actually count governments and uh, the national government needs to think about. Right, even as a... Yeah. For an educational program about these um, cultural etiquettes, mm -hmm. the need to look after the, the parents. Um, the way the parents have the obligation to look after the children. The children also should have obligation to look after their parents at a certain age. As um, Kenneth is saying, there is a generational challenge here that um, they don't see things the way others see, the, the older ones see. Eh? So, is it because we have not educated our people properly on these kind of things? To the extent that um, there used to be a time when people would be taught these things, even discussions in school. Now we are so concerned with the technicalities that we miss the cultural value, cultural aspect of it. Is that the reason why we may have some of these things? We also have a challenge in the sense that um, those parents who do very well, some of them, uh, their children are waiting for them to die. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's happening. They say, and when are you going to go so that you can partake? Inherit. Inherit. Is it still alive? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing here? Your, your colleagues have gone. <laughs> so, but, but I, I think also... So it becomes a question of value. Don't, don't, you, don't you think also maybe there should be a paradigm shift? So why, why can't you, you, when you're really getting up in years, and uh, of course your sunset is almost now uh, mm. on the horizon, mm. can you put your, your ducks in a row and organize yourself, not waiting until you die, that you can write your will when you are alive? Mm. You see? Yeah, as in, well, of course you cannot write your will when you're dead, <laughs> but of course you, you, you ha you, all you reveal. I mean, if it's your property, Farah, you, you say, okay, uh, you know, this is how it should be shared. I don't want people to be wrangle, mm -hmm. wrangling around and fighting over my property when we have the, you know, the, the courts now coming to intervene or maybe people who are holding your trust as well who are determining who should be dividing your property or real estate. I, I think also it's honors yeah. for, for the elderly, for, for, for the parents themselves mm -hmm. to take that honors so that while you're still alive, mm -hmm. you have all those things sorted out. That's why we have how many billions in the unclaimed assets authority? Plenty, plenty. Yeah, because people are, are very cagey on information. Uh, you have m -Pesa with such money. You have such amount of money stashed away in banks. Your wife does not know. Your children, they do not know. Some of them, they dig even, you know, the underground to bury their, uh, their title deeds because uh, they are, there's all this morbid fear about you know, your money or your title deeds has been taken away. I think, I think you just need to put your house in order at the end of the day. And again, before, before we finish, even as we're talking about taking care of your parents, maybe a question that should also come to bear is the fact that uh, as we're living this epic of time, having children is a blessing. But even moving forward, paradventure, when they don't take care of you, then what really happens? 
how then do you sort out yourself in terms of retirement yeah. and uh, you know how you you're going to spend your life devoid of the check that really checks in every month uh, from your employer or from your business activities when edge catches up with you and uh, you you get slow of strength I mean or yeah you, you get a bit weaker you, you're not as fast as you are before uh, you're not as vigorous as you are before I mean you're not in your element as you used to be then how do you prepare for these eventualities well, well let me let me tell you something it's, it's the nature of humanity. It's nature of the animal world. Parents love their children. The bond from the father to the son or the mother to the son is so powerful that the mother, that mother would, would give every sacrifice she can to make sure that son succeeds in life by creating the right foundation for him. What we don't have is the reciprocity the reciprocal, now that they're invalid, you are supposed to return that favor in terms of love for them. But parents, I went to a national school, Dibal, and I remember mothers coming in from mainly central Kenya here with, with, with big, what do you call, baskets on their heads and barefoot, mm. barefoot. Carrying bananas and carrying everything and carrying a maize for them, which is already to bring to their children. The visiting days. The visiting days, yes. Mm. They, they literally are out there to barefoot, barefoot. And you can tell this mother works on the farm or the small plots they have every day. And all she wants to make sure is that this young man gets the right education and succeeds in life. And, and if that young man, at the appropriate time when she's become invalid, she cannot work anymore for him or for her. Cannot reciprocate that. It is, it is, it is, it is terrible. And, and, and we, need to be, we need to have a law in this country. I'm not going to name names, but one of the most eminent guys in this country. The father died in a, I'm sure you know what, the person I'm talking about. The father was in a, in a madhouse with a blanket and was killed by thugs. Why right? Mm. And, the, the, and, the, and, the, and the son, who has been taken to the top school those days, and Makerere and everywhere else, was living in Madaiga. You, you know what I mean? And, 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 and that, that, goes, that goes for literally 80% of the Kenyans, the, the young elite we have in here. I, I mean, I would love to wash my dad every morning myself and sit with him. He just doesn't like the, the climate here in Nairobi. But, but if, he, if he's, you know, if I have to sell everything I have to please him, for me that, that, would, be, that would be the ultimate achievement I would have made, you know what I mean, because of, he's your he's a father, and the mother is the mother. And, 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 and but, but, but again, sometimes, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they, they love their children so much they, they will take everything from the ones who are hardworking and very obedient and give it to some lazy guys back at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> give, it, give, it, give it to your younger brothers who, who don't want to work. Mm. And, 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 and you know, you've taken money there and straight away they're, they're, they're taken care of. But I love it even when that happens. And that same brother is going to tell you to go to hell, you know. Do I, do I care about you as long as my mother is alive? She will take from you by force and give it to me. You, you know what I mean? I, I'm not supposed to get pissed off with that. I'm, I'm just supposed to please my mom. If pleasing her means she has to do some of these things, you, you just do it. Thank you. So, 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 so I, 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 I think we need... Now, is that very widespread, Oliver? No. And by the way, let me tell you. Whatever you do to your parents, your children will do to you. Whatever you do, you take good care of your parents, your children will take good care of you in old age and in, when, you are, when you are invalid. You, you don't take good care of your parents, you will have the same problem also. In, and, and people, and people will remember. There will always be people who remember and say, ah, you see what's happening to him and his children don't take care about him? That's exactly how he dealt with his father or mother. Um, and, and <laughs> Dipal, uh, one, of course, is... Um, Mishmiwa's generation, Prophet's generation, my generation, we were actually taught these values. Uh, and also, we grew up in an environment 
where we saw how our mothers struggled. Uh, when Mishmiwa was talking about mothers carrying things, uh, I at some point thought he was talking about my mother. Uh, poor lady who can neither read nor write, but made sure that all of us went to school. Uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I could see her struggle. And I said at some stage in my life, if I cannot pass these exams for myself, at least let me do it for that poor lady. Uh, because the disappointment to her, if I fail, will be such a that, um, uh, you, you know, she will break down. So there are some exams I did in my life and I had to pass because of my mother. Uh, but then we are actually failing the current generation because we have not been able to impart that to them. Uh, I have, I don't see any burden taking care of. My mother is a, is a priority in everything. I, I don't have a problem. Uh, and the best way to differ with me is if you offend my mother. Uh, you know, we have, have we taught that to the current generation, the children who are growing in town, who are seeing their fathers and their mothers driving along, around and living good life, uh, you know, we are not struggling the way our parents did it. Uh, you know, have we taught these cultural values, these ancestral values to, uh, 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 to, 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 to these children? That is probably a responsibility of modern urban uh, parents, uh, because we seem not to be doing very well on, on, on that. Right, even as you're finalizing this, because uh, uh, just going back to the children's matter, we have the national government, uh, which is mulling over now on shutting down private uh, children's homes. And this has been a subject since last year. Uh, they're saying uh, these centers are meant to be transitional, and some of these children, they overstay there. And the government is now planning to come up with their own sort of uh, children homes. What do you think about this particular move? Because I think most of us that are being run by church, uh, faith-based organizations, uh, some you know, NGOs as well at the end of the day, do you think with the sort of corruption we've been seeing um, in this country, the government will have, okay, they, they could have the goodwill, but, uh, and they were with all, but do you think they will do as a good a job like what the faith-based organizations are doing, what uh, some of these uh, NGOs are doing in running these particular centers at the end of the day. Of course, some of them have been flagged out, you know, as a conduit of uh, uh, human, human trafficking, children trafficking at the end of the day. But do you think this will be a, a, a salutary move from the government to shut down these private homes? Do you think it's, it's the wisest Personally, of things I, to I, do? I would have no problem with that. Only, only yes, only if the government does. Look, there are, two, there are two scenarios here. The children who are there because they are orphans. They don't have mothers and they don't have fathers. But as long as a parent is alive, the best environment for a child is to grow with a parent or a family member and be taken care of in that place and let there be regular visitations to make sure that nothing goes wrong. But then, of course, because they're very poor sometimes and they can't do it on their own, the government needs to give them those stipends to take care of those children. Because even if you take over that institution, every child will cost you not less than, you know, 10,000 shillings a month. So if you can give the seven or 8,000 shillings or 5,000 shillings to a family member who's taking care of that child, and you make sure the child is, there's social workers who visit that and, and, and make sure everything is on, on course, then, of course, and I think I'll prefer that. I have a problem with all forms of boarding environments for children. Boarding environment where children are there on their own. And I know our secondary schools are boarding. I know some primary schools are boarding. Some of the high school schools are boarding. But, but we, we, the, we, right now, with the kind of a social media we have in the country, the global village we've all become, <laughs> you know what I mean? The global village we've all become. It's, it's difficult to trust a child or your child in any environment other than one which you closely supervise yourself. Because then you, you, that child is not growing up as your own child. 
even for well to do families that take their children to boarding schools i took a good number of my children to boarding schools before and if i had known what i know today with all the difficulties that are there i would have brought them up to stay at home throughout even if you're going to create something that looks like because we have big families ourselves it's something that looks like a boarding school in your own home. You know what I mean? Get a bigger home, yeah? And let the children come in there and watch every night how they feed, how they go, do their homework, how they do all these things. And, and that, I think, is the best way for children. Home is the best way. That's how families used to be. And, 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 and adults were literally parents. You know, the old, I grew up myself. If I'm at a school hour, any of my father's friends would see me out there. They would ask him, what are you doing? What are you doing here? And, 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 and uh, you'll be disciplined sometimes, but not by your, your father or your parents, but by other family members or basically the, that wider, wider community, wider, wider community itself, to make sure that you're there. And, and when they see you in the mosque and everything else, they just talk about you, they call you, you're doing a good job, you know, keep you know, this good behavior. So a child was a son of or a daughter of the society in a way. And, 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 and there's a celebration. They go to the madrasa, we had a madrasa, they go to the schools. And, and you know, you, you, are, you are aware of the fact that somebody is watching you every time you are, everywhere you are. So as, even at that young age, you're careful that you don't go to the wrong places because somebody is watching you who is going to tell your parents. So the best environment, in my opinion, for bringing up children is their own homes, their parents. If the parents are not there, the immediate relatives who basically, if you think they are responsible enough, yes. If not, I have no problem with the state, with the, with the missionaries or the, the churches and the, the religious sector, the Muslims and the rest of them taking care of it. Because they do that. They do that. I mean, I know of uh, orphanages that are doing so well and children are, you know, it's good, well, taken very well care of. And, and always make sure, always make sure. If it's a boy's body, there's a matron there who is a woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are always matrons who are women who make sure that these kids go to sleep and take care of them, like a mother. The child has got to have the, the demonstration of the mother. Somebody who will go, pick him up, put her on, on a lap, and ask, ask him, what is the problem? What is the problem? The girls' schools, the same thing also. Right. So, so the, you can do it often, age, but in, in a, in as close to the home environment as, as, as it can possibly get. You, you see what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Professor Mashara, even as we're winding up with this, I know today we've really gone off rails. <laughs> we're supposed to be yeah. on foreign policy, diplomacy. We'll come to that, but I think this is a pivotal issue. Even as we look around and uh, our society is rotting, mm -hmm. uh, then what does it uh, benefit uh, us to know more, much more around us, which is not uh, a bad thing. But, uh, you know, you raise a very important point because uh, I remember the former education uh, minister, Fred Matiangi, was even mulling over sending some boys uh, or, yes, some high schoolers from boarding school, they should, be, they should, they should take option of being day scholars yeah. because of a big issue of a, a gender, it's not really gender identity, but uh, the, the, the issue of what we're talking about with the LGBTQ arising, especially in high schools, I mean, it's become a big problem. And uh, that was a conversation saying, you know, some of these boys, or some of his girls who are embroiled in these activities, they should become day scholars. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me also, that was just as uh, uh, axiomatic and uh, symbolic of a fact that uh, things are, are not really well. The values. Well, then, down yeah. in high schools as well, if it can come to that particular attention of a CS now calling for that particular move. Uh, I agree with the, the speaker. The best environment is the, is the home environment, the family environment. And the question that comes up, what necessitates the creation of these places in the first place? And um, to what extent is the state involved in ensuring that they are safe? Because they should be. And to whom do we entrust these people? Just anybody who says I can run a home? Well, what was the criteria for doing it? The move to uh, reduce this, I think it's a good move. As much as possible, put the children in the home environment, in the family environment, to avoid some of the negative attractions 
that come with it. And so when uh, the former minister was saying that he, people should be day scholars, um, I think he had a good point. Very good. Other, uh, other, uh, apart from uh, that, there is also you can accommodate more, more students in a school <laughs> if, if they are day scholars. Boarding is a um, limited facility. And uh, there is my idea that everybody has to be a boarder. Is an, um, misplaced. Is misplaced. So the move to, uh, to create more day schools is a very positive way of not only dealing with some of these challenges, but also increasing the opportunities for as many students as is possible. So it's a, it's a tricky issue for the country. It also requires some balancing. Where do you balance? Because there may be, yes, some children who may need those homes. For whatever reason, they, they, they need. Because there was a reason why they came up. But the proliferation of almost everybody saying, I have no children, children's home, and you really doubt about it, it's another matter. Thank you. All right, uh, let's turn the clock now to what is happening internationally. We begin with Senegal, where the swearing-in of Basiroi. Diomai Fai, as the fifth president of Senegal, has continued to receive acclamation and praise across the African continent and beyond, with young politicians in Kenya seeing his election victory as a beacon of hope for young generation. Although it happened thousands of miles away, if you may just roll on with the autocue, please, the inauguration of the 44-year-old has breathed a great deal of vigor and valor to young politicians who are currently giving the old in Kenya a run for their money. As KTN's political affairs reporter Emmanuel Tour now explains, Fire becomes the youngest democratically elected president in Africa, one who was a prisoner 20 days ago. Basiru Diomai Fai. Senegal's fifth president and Africa's youngest elected president. Until about two weeks ago, he was a little known opposition leader behind bars, detained without trial on charges including inciting insurrection. On March 13th, Fire was cooling his feet in prison alongside Osman Sonko, the charismatic kingmaker and leader of the opposition party, African Patriots of Senegal for Work, Ethics and Fraternity, Pastef, who was blocked from running for office after being convicted of an offense. Sonko's woes gave Faye a rare opportunity to dramatically storm into the presidency, trouncing the ruling party's candidate Amadou Ba. And although it happened about 6,000 kilometers away, back home the impact of the historic win and meteoric cries to power is still ringing loud. And for the young politicians in Kenya who want to lead Kenya, they must uh, be inspired by Senegal, but they must go the extra mile and demonstrate. It's very important. Those two things are very important. Demonstrate capacity and you demonstrate uh, competence. President William Ruto being one of the leaders who have congratulated Faye, saying his visionary leadership is inspiring and sets an unmatched example for emerging leaders. Other young generation legislators led by Kiharu member of parliament Dindi Nyoro from the Kenya Kwanza side and Mbakasi East MP Babo Wino have also sent their congratulatory messages to the new president terming his election array of hope for the youth. The other day a president has been elected in Senegal at 44 years, years old. We are late. We are late. We are late. Gone are the days when we, are, we were told that we are leaders of tomorrow. We need to be impactful in the current generation. I want to beseech any young leader in any position. And leadership, you must not be the president for, uh, uh, for you to be a leader. You must not be the secretary general for you to be a leader. You can still be a leader even at church level. On his part, Nyoro took to his social media accounts with advice to Fai and Sonko, urging them to stick together past the election. Among our peers, there's nobody who's better than Babu Owino. And those are the people I'm going to vie with, uh, to vie against. In when it comes to the presidential elections. So literally, I will be. The only question is, when will this happen? But if he comes with Dendi Nyoro as a running mate, then I think things are going to be much easier for him uh, because uh, our people identify with Dendi Nyoro. So young leadership must be trusted and we must be able to give young leaders 
an opportunity to nurture their leadership. Okay. Emmanuel Tor, KT News, Nairobi. Indeed, and of course that is really sparking a lot of debate. Uh, if you may just uh, begin with you, Farah Malim, on that particular... Uh, we considerably talked about it, but you can hear the voices. They say, oh, it's time. It is now. A source of uh, inspiration to many young people. Uh, but the question is, uh, having a youthful face, do you also have uh, what it takes uh, that's, to, to that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the question. That's the so issue. it's not about that uh, no, no, the youthful no, no. face is a qualification, no, no, no. right? No, 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 no. And, and when we say that, all we have to do the same is um, totally misplaced. And uh, this is not, this is not uh, a modern thing to elect a young man as a, as a president of a country. Alexander the Great died at the age of 32. And before that, he conquered 70% or 75% of the world as we know it now, except Africa. He never set foot in Africa. But he set foot in North Africa, I think. And, um, and, and basically, he was, was a proven leader. I mean, you can't, you can't conquer the rest of all, all the world, or 80%, 70% of the world, uh, when, you are, when you're that young, that young, if you don't have very powerful leadership qualities. Um, and, and, you know, when you look at the cabinet we had ourselves, at independence, most of them were in their the, the, the early late 20s. Early 30s. Early 30s, late 20s. Uh, nobody, you know, Tom Boyer was killed at the age of 39. And he, has been, he had been a, a public figure, a pan-Africanist, a global African who went to the U.S. and did all the great things that he did when he was less than 30. Uh, because he was killed in 69 and we got independence in 63, am I right? Yes. So by the time we're getting independence, we're only 33 years old. But he had been a trade, trade unionist who was globetrotting all over the world, started the famous uh, airlift, the airlift, the airlift of students to, to the U.S. And, and, and basically, he was friends with uh, who is who, the Kennedys, you know, the, the, uh, the civil rights movements in the, U, in, the, in, 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 in the U.S. that time. And all Pan-Africans all over the world, the Caribbeans, uh, the, the ones who were in Europe at the time. Remember Marcus Gavi, what's his name? This guy who started the, I'm trying to remember, the Du the, the, the Boer, the Boer, yeah, the Boer and the rest of them. So basically, uh, um, I came to Parliament myself when I was 35 years old, uh, and, and, and you know, basically was there. And uh, many people were that young. Jose Kutu was also 35 years old. Actually, most of us, so-called, were, were, were so-called young tax were there, and, and we were we were we were young. A good number of us were young. Uh, so so the, the the point I'm trying to say is that, uh, and and Jose Kutu rose up to become the Angtad Secretary General, at a very, relatively, relatively, you know, comparatively, a young age, but one of, literally one of the best the UN has had before. So, so uh, it's not that you're going to be young, it's just that what can you bring on the table? You see what I mean? But that really flies in the face of what you're saying, that, uh, you know, having a youthful first does not give you automatic, yes. the, the automatic yes, entry. It doesn't give you that automatic yeah, yeah. entry into but that. But you started young. I started young, yes, yeah, but it's, really young it's, it's not because of the age. It's because of, I was a businessman for God knows what, about almost 10 years before that. I became, when I became, I became a professional. I worked outside the country for a very short stint of time and came back and, and was, was doing business. I was involved in social, what do you call, uh, activities and uh, was helping my community. And by the way, I did not ask for this election. I ran away from it for God knows weeks. The community went to my dad. And, 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 and literally it was that either you accept that we elect you as, a, as MP for the area or we curse you. All right. So I was, I was a reluctant person at the time. But once I came in, I continued. But you see, you have to have a proven record of having served the society in a manner for the society to put their trust in you. You know what I mean? It doesn't start with a trust. You don't have to be elected a president or a member of parliament for you now to begin working for the society and all the time before that you're working for yourself. Even as a profession, where you are right now, as an anchor man here in uh, KTN, you will get my point. You have to have a social responsibility back at home. Be the chairman or a member of a, a school, whatever it is. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean. The Put cattle deep around uh, the village. Cattle deep back at home <laughs> in the village. Put up an orphanage, which you're talking about right now. Help uh, in the fundraising, take the money from us and everybody who comes here for, <laughs> for an interview, but put up a, a school back at home. You know what I mean. <laughs> Uh -huh. you, you, you just don't, you know, you just, it's not a promotion. 
It's not that, you know, when you perform very well your job right now as an anchor, you can become the managing director of this organization at a later stage. That's not how politics works. Politics works, you prove, you, 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 you earn the trust of the people before they even give you a responsibility. Uh, you, you get my point? You earn the trust of the people by sacrificing the little you have. Right. And, 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 and I think that is the, what people miss out. It's, it's not just because you're managing the CDF very well, and, 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 and giving them everything that came from the government and you're not pocketing it because everybody else is pockets it. But so you're a good, you're, you're a, you're a good leader, no. no. Right, you, you, you take from your own pocket, whatever little you earn, whatever it is, as a, I don't know what you are, but even as a clerk somewhere or whatever it is, and give it back. And progressively, as you keep on giving it back to the society and mentoring younger people and um, uh, buying football, what do you call, uh, balls for them and putting up, you, you just have to be there for the society from young age before you go back to the society and ask them to trust you with an official position. You, you, you get my point? With an official position. Uh, this, is not, this is not because you've done very well uh, as, as a technocrat yourself or as a businessman and you're up there. Now you're coming back to the community and say, I've already uh, actualized myself, self-actualization. I want to serve you now. No. Within that place where you are, serve the community first, make the necessary sacrifices, and as often as possible, you should be even a reluctant person to take a position uh, uh, and the community then would say, no, no, we can trust you with this because we know you. Thank you. All right, when we circle back, I think my music is up. We need to take a short break. Uh, now that he's been sworn in, given the instruments of power, it's just uh, buckling down to business. I think one of the top things that should be on his uh, uh, agenda as well, moving forward, Senegal to wait, is it's the offshore uh, maiden oil production in the country after the discovery of the oil wells in Senegal. Because that can be also a very contentious issue on how uh, the revenue therefrom can be shared within if we don't have proper structures and policy put in place uh, to just safeguard this, that can be a niggling worry as well. But what some of the salient lessons are we learning as well? Uh, we, we know we've talked considerably talk about this uh, even from our previous engagements here, but we want to just see uh, what will be the way forward, this engagement from you know, the colonizers as well that he's been startly talking against them as well. We'll pick up the brains of our panelists from the other side of a break, don't go away.